I haven't really talked a lot about games on this channel yet, and not to brag, I'm kind of a big gamer. I used to judge video games growing up by how much they resembled more traditional storytelling mediums like television or movies, and I think today it's very clear that a lot of games can do that. Ah! Riley? <gasps> Ow. I landed on my hip. What the hell? I thought I was bitten. I know. It was kind of awesome. You're not gonna kill me, are you? I haven't seen you, and I don't even know how long. 45 days? Well, 46, technically. Wanna know what I've been up to? All this time, I thought you were dead. Yeah. As I matured and played more games, because that's how you mature, I started focusing more on not necessarily how similar games were to traditional storytelling mediums, uh, but how they could be different. And games are unique because they have interaction, because they have rules, because they have game mechanics and game systems. Uh, all of these contribute to the interactivity of the game. And these are things that, that books, movies, music, television, they don't have. For example, something as obvious as making a choice as to what a character does that influences the story. I'm so sorry. But it can also be something not as obvious, like the ability in a game of Risk to trade in three cards for reinforcements, which could totally lead to a twist ending where an underdog rises up to be the next Napoleon, or in a game of Pandemic, how they have a system where you slowly increase the infection rate over time. So while you and your friends are struggling to prevent humanity's extinction, the conflict is slowly being ramped up. The point is these aren't scripted story elements. They're mechanics and systems that are put into a game that will naturally affect the story. The game that I wanted to specifically talk about in regards to this today is a little game called This War of Mine by 11-Bit Studios. There really is no linear story in the game. Um, yet I still feel for the characters that I'm playing in the situation that they're in. This war of mine, like a lot of other video games, is about a war. What makes it different is that instead of playing a super soldier or, or a soldier with boots on the ground fighting the war, you're playing civilians in a city under siege, just trying to survive. The game itself is based very heavily off of the Siege of Sarajevo during the Bosnian War, but it's an unnamed city in the game, so it could really be applied to any major siege, from Stalingrad to Aleppo. In the game, you pick from a, a set list of characters that all have a different backstory that's written out for you. One is a former reporter, one was a cook, but once you pick a combination of them, your mission is to keep them alive until a ceasefire is called. During the day, you have these characters build up your shelter where they live, whether you're patching up walls to prevent intruders or building an oven to cook food. And then at night, you go out and it turns into more of a stealth game where you send somebody in your party to go to these random locations from a blown out school to a church and they have to gather supplies to bring back the next day. And this cycle repeats itself. The important thing to remember is that apart from the character's backstory, every time you play this game, it will have a very different outcome. No two stories will be alike. Instead of telling a story in a linear fashion like a book or a movie might, um, it tells this story through mechanics and game systems. And this game in particular does it really well. For one thing, there's a lack of resources. When you first start out the game, you might be able to search a lot of abandoned buildings and find everything from medicine to food, but the more you search these places, the more scarce the resources become. This is in combination with another game mechanic, which has your characters slowly deteriorating over time. If you don't feed them, they get hungry. If you don't feed them more, they start to starve and could eventually die. Um, if they get sick and you don't give them medicine, they will gradually get sicker and sicker and sicker. The more I say this, the more I realize it's a dark game. So it's a combination of the scarcity of resources and your constant need to attend to your s survivors 
um, that creates this drama and this tension because eventually you're going to have to make some difficult choices. You either trade some of your valuable resources for things like medicine and food, uh, you have the option of stealing it from somebody, or in the most extreme cases, if somebody's not willing to go without a fight, you could actually down the road murder somebody for their food. The last time I played the game, the mechanics worked together uh, so well that they've created this really authentic moment of, of despair where I had two characters living in the shelter. One was dying of an illness um, and we desperately needed medicine and we had nothing. So I sent the other one out at night to go to a marketplace because I didn't want to kill anybody or, or rob anybody. I wanted to get the medicine without losing my character's humanity. And I ended up sending her to the marketplace with all the rest of the food that we had and nobody would trade with her. And that's a really authentic game moment that, that isn't scripted. That might never happen to me again. It led to this really dramatic moment. Now there's many other mechanics at play in this game as well. The one that I wanna remark on most is what is known in the gaming community as permadeath. You know, in a lot of video games, uh, when your character dies, like in a Call of Duty, they come right back and they continue the fight. In a game like this War of Mine, using this permadeath mechanic, uh, when a character dies, they die. I'll end the video comparing it to, let's say, a more traditional medium of storytelling. I read this book, The Cellist of Sarajevo. It's a fictional story about the Siege of Sarajevo by uh, Stephen Galloway that tells the story of four people living through the siege. One of the themes in both stories is that death is a part of everyday life during war. The book conveys this message by talking about death as a part of everyday life, by explaining that, you know, you could just be walking down the street and you could get instantly shot by a sniper and that's the end. And the characters describe this in, you know, how many people that they've seen die. But this is where I found that the game actually stepped up as a very interesting storytelling tool. In this book, you're not going to reach page 64 and have all the characters die off and have the rest of the pages be blank. You know when consuming a linear story that you're gonna get a meaningful story from start to finish. That when characters die, there's usually a meaning behind it. For instance, the 20 characters that die in the very beginning of this book serve as a catalyst for one of the characters that influences what they do for the rest of the novel. In this war of mine, you play knowing that your story could end at any moment for any reason. When you're playing this game, there is a real sense of uncertainty. I'm not comparing what's better, a video game or a book or a movie or music. I just, I definitely think that, that there are storytelling elements that can be learned from games. This is my first time actually talking about games on video. Um, so hopefully it made sense. If you want real game analysis that goes a lot deeper, I definitely recommend you check out my friend's channel, Game Array, which I've linked below. Um, really interesting, well thought out pieces on video games and their influence. I'm probably framing this more for a casual audience who might not know a little bit about games. Anyway, thank you for watching. That's it. See you all next week with another video and have a pleasant evening.